Hi everyone, today I am going to review the um, beauty sponge by Gino & Co, the microfiber velvet sponge. So this is from China, um, got here pretty quick actually, and it was six US dollars. I can't remember what that converted to in Australian dollars, but just as an estimate, I'd say just under $10. So this is the sponge. It's quite small, but I'm going to go and wet it and see if it gets any bigger. I have seen mixed reviews about this. I've seen some people that love it and rave about it, and then some people that just think it's the stupidest thing ever. Um, so I was curiosity got the best of me, so I wanted to try this for myself. So what I'm going to use it with is a foundation that I know works for my skin to give this the best chance. And I'm going to try and contour and do a little bit of powder with it as well to set under my eyes. So I want to see what multi-use it does have. Here is the material. It does feel like a soft, really soft velvet. So it does feel soft to the touch, but there's no difference in size really with the water. Might be a tiny bit bigger. I'm going to use on my face the L'Oreal Infallible Pro, Pro Glow. Um, I'm gonna start with the Becca First Light Priming Filter Primer. I really hope this does look nice because I would like to use it. I don't like to buy things and then not be able to use it. It defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to put some of this on my hand because I don't know what this is going to be like. Now I'm going to start with this flat side. Kind of noisy. <laughs> but so far so good. I feel like it's giving my face a good finish. I've actually decided to just do half my face and then I'll do my other half of my face with um, a beauty, a regular beauty sponge. Beauty sponge. I mean, it's making this foundation full coverage. I'm just going to have a little closer look. It's sitting really nicely on my skin. What makes this sponge different? Like, what do they claim makes it better? Because essentially it's just a different material. So we can see the two differences in my face. Um, I am going to do the other side with my Real Techniques beauty sponge. All right, so I've got my Real Techniques. Okay, I can already tell this is not as high coverage. I can already tell. And it is just soaked up all my product. I'm gonna get some more product. Put it in my hand. Hmm. Can you guys tell the difference? You can still see my pigmentation here. But here it just looks flawless. So we'll see how it sets because I know the Pro Glow sets really nicely. So I've got to give that a chance. 
I'm also intrigued to see how this goes with concealer and powder compared to real techniques. Okay, so I feel like I had to use a little bit more product. Just a little bit more. And what's that? And it's not as high coverage. So the Juno and Co has so far given me better coverage. So let's move on to concealer. I'm going to use Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I use the shade Swan. So I'm not going to do too much. Get my red bits. My sensitive areas. I will use this one first and I'm going to use the tip here um, I might even use the curved side I'm just gonna have a look close up yeah it's quite nice I think it's blended well and I'm gonna do my nose with this And I have used the curved side for all of that. It's blended really nicely. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy with that. All right, now let's go over with my real techniques and compare. see a huge difference actually I think it looks I don't know is this more I feel like this looks like it's more high coverage because the foundation is already more high coverage it's hard to tell but it still looks nice the concealer like this side still looks really good like I'm I'm still happy with it but in comparison I'm actually quite surprised that this side looks better than the real techniques. Crazy, huh? Gotta try these things. So, what I wanted to do was also contour or powder first. So I have the Laura Mercier translucent powder. Laura. I'm gonna do this under my eyes. Just in where I did concealer basically. So I am going to use the flat side for this one. I think that'll give me better precision. Let's have a little look. Pretty good. I mean, I have a few creases under my eyes, which is just natural. But it's done the job. And the other side with my real techniques. I actually feel like this one gripped the powder better. This one got a little patchy. And I feel like that's because this doesn't feel wet. It is wet, but it doesn't feel wet. I feel like the little microfiber hairs like are gripping the powder. So you can see here how it's like grabbed on. And we'll go in with our real techniques on the other side. See, so actually it, it has, mm, it has grabbed it. Maybe I'm just being a little bit biased now. Nah, I looked different before. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a bit of contouring. I am going to use my Models Prefer Contour Collection Contouring Stick. 
and I think they only have one color so it looks like this so I'm just going to do what I would usually do with a cream contour Looking divine as always. All right, Juno, let's see what you got. Oh, I don't know where to start. Um, so this, I'm going to use the uh, curvy side. I also want to know how this washes. I might wash this brush after and let you guys know how it washes because it's looking dirty AF right now. The nose, be very delicate with the nose. I'm always so scared of nose contouring because you see a lot of <sighs> overdone little tip. You know, this is a little bit firmer than the real techniques, but I kind of like it. Like for that purpose is there. I needed a bit of firmness. I don't want no I don't want it to be too cushiony sometimes. Because sometimes like with cream contouring you, you need a bit of give, a bit of friction. So I mean I'm not having any issues. I mean, and it's like really cheap. Real Techniques brushes in Australia are not cheap like they are in America. They're like $16 um, or like $22, $24 for two. Like they're not cheap. I got, um, I got a two pack of my Real Techniques on sale for $20 and I was like, oh my God, so cheap. But when you think about what it is, it's quite expensive. Oh, I hate it when the hair gets in the way. I only really cream contour when I have time. So I'm just gonna flip over to the flat side and see how that goes. See if it's a little bit better. Um, yeah, I only cream contour when I have time because it really does take a lot more time to do this, to blend it out. And then you're doing powder over the top anyway, aren't you? So generally day to day I powder, but I find I look more flawless with a cream contour. I really want to try the Hourglass cream contour. Actually, no, what I really, really want is the Tom Ford shade and illuminate but it's a hundred dollars <laughs> but it's on my list for my wedding makeup so I told my partner I don't need to have the most expensive dress in the world but I need to have the best makeup Tom Ford Giorgio Armani Hourglass like I've got these in my head. I've even like been screenshotting the things that I want to buy <laughs> for one day. But like makeup's more important to me than a wedding cake or a band. I want good makeup. <laughs> is that too much to ask? Already this side is got more product. I feel like this side just faded away. Okay, I'm gonna do under here. Just makes my bottom lip look a little zhuzhed. Kinda of gives it that shadow underneath, just a little subtle shadow. I'm not really, I don't really overline my lips, but I like to do that. And then let's go down here. Um, okay, so I think the Real Techniques is doing a better job at blending quicker. 
I say quicker, I'm not saying better, but I'm saying quicker. So let's see how we go with this, because this is the true test. Yeah, it's definitely blending quicker for sure. So if you're looking for time, Real Techniques is contouring better, but I think this looks better. Can you, I, can you tell the difference? I feel like I can really tell the difference. Like this one's really brought shading to my face. And then this is just kind of blended. But I wouldn't say, like I've got real definition here. I don't have any different definition here. I usually do it with a brush. I find it just looks much more defi defined. But this is making my cheeks look great. Um, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to continue doing my makeup for another video. But what do I think of Juno & Co's microfiber velvet sponge? What do I think of it? I love it. I think it's fantastic. It gave me better foundation coverage. Same for concealer. I didn't see a huge difference with the concealer. The contouring was so much better as well. And I think it's because of the firmness. And I know a lot of people think you, you don't want a beauty sponge to be firm. I agree with you. You want it to be fluffy and lush. However, for the purpose of the different things that I've done, it's made it a multi-purpose item. As opposed to this, it blends really well but almost too well like I felt like I had to use more foundation um, and I still had a lighter coverage so I think the little microfibers in here let me just look at the instructions oh okay how to apply dry products for best results use your Juno dry for when you're applying like your powders and stuff the dry microfiber service will act as brush hairs for evenly blended distribution. And that's what I, I agree with that. I think the little microfiber hairs, it blends the sponge with a brush. And I've really noticed that. So to use it wet, you use it for concealers, contouring liquid foundations. Okay, use a dime size of product on the back of your hand to prepare application, which I did. Okay, it says do not apply product directly onto your sponge, Juno sponge as it will transfer too thick. Using a stippling motion, dab and stipple product until you achieve your desired effect. So without even knowing it, I've done it correctly. <laughs> I probably should have read this before. It says don't vigorously rub or scrub product off sponge. Don't use any textured brush cleaning contraptions. It will tear and don't submerge and leave the sponge in water simple instruction instructions so for dry products it's loose powders blush and highlighters I think I'm gonna like proper continue using it like I think after I'm gonna fix the rest of my face up with this because it's done a better job when I continue my makeup so um, has anyone else tried it that's what I want to know um, I've seen a lot of beauty influencers use it um, I just watched that Talia review it because um, I wanted to see what some other people's opinions were. Not to influence my own, but just to see what the vibe was out there. And she hated it with her foundation. And I love it with my foundation. I mean, everyone's skin type is different. Everyone grabs product on their skin differently, which I understand. But I am like really impressed. I'm definitely, definitely going to continue using this. I'm glad that I bought it and I tried it. Um, and yeah, yeah, happy chappy. Um, if you like this video, please like it. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate any support. Um, I'm new to the YouTube world and any support is really, really appreciated. Okay. Thanks guys. Bye.